When it comes to aerodynamics and going fast, our narrow handlebars really faster and lower drag than wide handlebars. And what's with the trend for angled hoods? Are they also faster? To find out, I joined Envy and Saddleback in the wind tunnel to put different handlebar widths and angled hoods through their paces to find out. The sports engineering hub at Silverstone is tailor-made for cycling. I've been a few times now and it's an amazing facility. This time, I let young George be a test dummy on the bike as we collected data on the different handlebars. We use a brand new NV Melee Aero Bike and to enable easy handlebar swapping, the bike was set up without the brakes and gears attached. This made life much easier. We started with a very typical width handlebar, an NV Compact. How do you feel, George? Fine, thanks, a bit warm. <laughs> first time in the wind tunnel. Yeah, first time. Uh, a bit noisy than I was expecting it to be. <laughs> Interesting experience, just trying to hold the same position. Um, it's amazing how much you've got to concentrate just to try and fixate on some, like a line in the distance and just stick to it. So yeah. It's quite tough actually, isn't it? Hold that same it is surprisingly difficult, yeah. yeah. So we've got some interesting data. So should we sort the handlebars and Let's, go yeah, again? see what happens if we go a bit narrower, shall we? First run done, now it's onto a narrow handlebar. The same as what Tali Pigaccio uses on his Carnago V4RS. A crazy narrow 37 centimeters in the hoods, but the same 42 centimeter drops as the previous NV Compact. How do I feel, George, on the narrow Aero handlebar? Uh, I mean, it's the bar I'm used to using, so it felt a lot more familiar to yeah. me. Um, on the drops, yeah, nice and wide, but definitely a lot more narrow on the tops. Hoods a little bit wider, probably than wide. As a preference, probably want to tip them in a little yeah. bit, but uh, no, it's about all right. So both these handlebars are the same width in the drops, but one narrow in the tops, right? Correct, um, because that's where you want to have the stability when you're descending. So both of these are a 42 on the drops. Um, so, you know, you have that, say, stability and confidence for descending. Um, but then this compact bar has a uh, 40 top, whilst the SES Aero has a 37 centre centre on the top. So you can get, the, on the SES bars, you can have that confidence with the 42 bar, then to get super aero on the hoods. For our final test, do angle hoods actually make a difference? There's one way to find out. We found your new uh, position. No. They're faster. Is that worth four watts? I think it's too narrow. I think I would find it a bit too dangerous and a bit uncomfortable. Somewhere in between could work, like having the previous position, but uh, with the hood slightly tilted in. So yeah, a compromise between this and the yeah. previous position would work for me. What experience like in a wind tunnel? Takeaways for you? So it's noisier than I expected, more humid. Um, and it's actually really difficult to hold the position consistent throughout the day. I think that's been the main uh, sort of takeaway from it is that um, to try and get the, the best data, uh, you can feel like you're holding the same position throughout a run, but it's then actually compare it to previous runs to make sure that, you know, it takes out as many variables as possible. Yeah. So yeah, but amazing experience. Like, what a facility. Incredible, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely amazing. And do you think it'd be faster when you get home, get on the road? Be faster. Yeah, well, it just validates the setup I've got already is fast, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have the numbers to uh, back it up. And... Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, some of the, the, the data is really interesting, but um, then it comes back down to practicality. Could you ride in that position all day? The answer is no. So actually, yeah. you know, I think that the, the setup that we sort of expected to be fastest is. It's, yeah, and it's a trade-off, isn't it? It's having the most aero position, but one you actually use and maintain. In the exactly. Real world. Exactly. Exactly. For hours on end. So, yeah, that's been good. Right, testing done. Time to crunch some numbers and dive into the data. Got my laptop here and I'll share all the numbers on the screen. 
Now, we did the testing at two speeds, 30 and 40 kilometers per hour, and two yaw angles, zero and 10 degrees, and rode both in the hoods and in the drops, trying to make this as real world relatable as possible. And we measured the power required to ride at those speeds. So on the hoods, the narrow handlebar does reduce the drag a lot compared to that 40, 42, as much as 20 watts at 40 kilometers per hour. So big, big difference. Even at 30K an hour, there's still a 10 watt saving to be had. Perhaps unsurprisingly, in the drops, the difference is smaller, but the aero handlebar still reduced drag compared to the regular round handlebar in our testing. And then our final test was the difference that the angled hoods make. And perhaps unsurprisingly, because the pros wouldn't do it if there wasn't some sort of benefit. And across all the speeds and your angles, there was definitely an improvement from angling the hoods over. So it definitely makes a difference. Although that difference is quite small, it has to be said. But if you're a pro or you care about marginal gains, probably worth doing. So the wind tunnel testing data clearly shows that a narrow aero handlebar offers lower drag than a wide non-aero round handlebar. And just by angling your hoods over a few degrees, you can save even more watts. It's no wonder the likes of Tally Pagatia are using such a setup. And one neat feature of this particular handlebar is how Envy give you that narrow hood setup for the extreme aero the racers want. You still have wide drops thanks to the flare design of this handlebar. So maximum control in the drops when descending but superior aero on the hoods. And it's worth remembering that lowering your drag isn't just about going fast. For the pros, it definitely is. But for us normal cyclists, lowering your drag is also about conserving energy. And whether you're racing or doing long rides and sporties, if you can conserve energy and reduce the power required to ride at different speeds, it means, especially on a long ride, you have more left in the tank for that final push or that final climb or that final sprint. And if you're dealing with wind conditions, that's also where a lower drag setup can definitely help you. We've all struggled against a headwind and riding in a wind tunnel, it's like riding against a headwind. So if you can reduce your drag through a narrow handlebar and angle hoods, it's gonna help you lower the power required to ride at any given speed. So aero for the pros, definitely about going faster, but for us normal cyclists, real world cyclists riding at normal speeds, which is Tess tried to focus on, there are still benefits to be had. But as with most things, it's a compromise. Narrow and angled hoods might be fast and low drag in the wind tunnel, but how does it impact handling and comfort out on the real roads? Well, for my next video, I'm going to compare a wide handlebar with the narrow handlebar from this testing on the MV Melee behind me and do some testing outside and talk about comfort and handling now we have the data from the wind tunnel and see how it compares. And make sure you don't miss that video by hitting the subscribe button right here. Definitely worth staying tuned for. Now in the meantime, let me know what width handlebar you prefer on your road bike. Wide, narrow, love to hear your thoughts as always. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.